Happy holidays, Needham, and welcome to this episode of What's My House Worth? Ryan, welcome and happy holidays oh, to you. Thanks. Same to you, Rob. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're here today to discuss the uh, data for the month of November, but I suppose we should introduce ourselves. I'm Rob Tickton. This is Ryan McDonald. We're with Hawthorne Properties. And get all that good stuff out of the way, and uh, I suppose just dive into the numbers, Ryan. It was actually a pretty busy November, would yeah. you say? Yeah, finished uh, fast and furiously, Rob. Yeah, let's yeah. see. How many sales total were there? 33. Oh. Up against 19 from last November, hmm. 24 in October. So it's a big, it's a busy month for closings. Your average sale price of just under 1.14 million, which is healthy. Our percentages are great, 100% of list, 99% of original list, average 42 days. So that's a pretty strong month, wouldn't you say? I would say so. And I think it speaks to the fact that, you know, we alluded to in the earlier episodes that we're a little slow out of the gate in terms of sales, but it certainly has been catching up both this month and last month. Uh, but if you look at the November sales comparison, you see the 33 is the highest, Ryan, in six years. Coincidentally, just last month in October, it was the highest October yeah. in six years. So the, the two months combined have been way busier than usual. Right. And like you said, we had a little bit of a slow start to the year, so we have to get to our 330 sales. So good job, November and October, for picking up the slack. Yeah. Good job, Fall. But what we like to see in addition to more sales is a, a healthy sales price. And so fortunately, as we look at the sales price for the month compared to years past, yeah, nothing to complain about at mm. all with that graph, Ryan. No, nope, it's a steady rise, Rob. Healthy indeed. So Robust. Yeah, very good. So we now have some time, fortunately, to take a look at the individual sales for the month. And uh, we're going to start low, work our way up, as we have done for just about six years now, and take a look at uh, four Avery Street, Ryan. And uh, Avery, of course, is near Cricket Field, yep. a little dead end there off Hillside. This house sold for $425,000 just in 2011. Yeah, so not a bad little uptick there, some appreciation, but I think this is potentially a land sale. And if it is, you know, getting a lot, a 10,000 plus square foot lot for, you know, 532,000, I mean, it's a Nice little location. Yeah, Dead End Street. So, yeah, I think this is a pretty good number. And I think we have quite a few land sales this month. Yeah, we do. Um, so it's interesting to see some of the different prices for land in different parts of town. But starting with a four even. Now, we're not sure this is a land sale. And we're not sure the other ones as well. Not all of them. Most some of them, we, some are. Of them we are. Yeah. Um, I think it's a pretty good number either way if, it's a, if, if you're the buyer here, um, getting it, whether it's going to be for a two-bedroom two house or a land sale. Yeah. Um, so, Good price. You yeah. like that. Uh, not too far away in the first name district, we're going to head over to 34 John Street. Of course, that's right off Central. This one sold for 585. The the listing sheet certainly made it appear as though uh, there was a hope that a developer wouldn't buy this one, Ryan. But you think one did? Yeah, looking at public record and who the buyer was, it's it's safe to say this is going to be redeveloped. And I mean, this is an example of one of those homes where you know it was it was put on the market. Obviously, at 649, it, it was overtly advertised to homeowners in, in an attempt to discourage developers even, Yep. Um, you know, with a save me from the claw and some of the other language that was in the listing. But clearly, you know, every, you know, homeowners had ample opportunity to look at it, vet it, but it ended up going for, you know, 60 grand under, under asking to a developer. So it's, it, it, it's going to its, its highest and best use, I yep. think is safe to say. And the highest and best offer. And the yep. highest and best offer. And so we'll see, 34 John again soon in a, probably, you know, eight months or so right back on the market. And uh, continuing with the land sale theme, I, I, I'm guessing both of us mm -hmm. are in agreement that this next one is a land sale. It's for Broadmeadow Road. This is at the corner actually of Broadmeadow and uh, Greendale. And this house was uninhabitable based on the pictures in really, really rough shape. And right. as a result, unlike the previous listing, this one was advertised to developers. Yeah. And so this one went completely the opposite direction. It positioned it low in order to encourage bidding, said, this is what we have, you know, come and get it, as opposed to positioning it high and trying to pigeonhole who your buyer is, yep. as they did on John Street, and it just didn't work. And it, John Street stays on the market, you know, 21 days, which isn't, which isn't a lot. Well, yep, true. Um, but this one goes in three, and it gets 620 as opposed to 585. So, yeah, that, well, as opposed to, yeah, right, well, 500,000 was a list, I mean, it's 120 right. grand. Right, yeah. so it's, it's just all about the positioning. It's saying, yeah. this is a land sale, come and get it, yep. and we're just going to, it's almost like initiating an auction. Right, and they're testing <clears throat> our theory that you can underprice a listing and right. need them if marketed correctly. Right. And so, uh, so 620, 500, you good with that price? I think it's pretty... For reasonable Broad in terms of the value yeah, of the land? Yeah, 620 for a lot in, in Broadmeadow, even though it's on the corner at Greendale. 
Um, yeah, I would say that's that's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's a good price. I would say so too. Uh, okay, staying along the uh, the Greendale corridor there, we're going to go over to Eight Jane Road. This is actually the corner of Jane and, and Hunting, but it's certainly close to Greendale. And uh, a nice updated ranch here. D didn't need to do much to this one, Ryan, but uh, it's already been yeah. deleted. Correct. And this Seven one had been used as a rental, so you can. Right. It stands to reason that it's been deleted. Right, and you're certainly uh, attracting more buyers when you advertise that. But mm -hmm. 1,700 square feet, I believe, does include the basement. A lot of rooms down there in the basement, it seemed. But uh, there you go, turnkey, right? Yep. All right, next up, 34 Stonehurst Road. In my opinion, just looking at this one on paper, you have uh, over an acre, yep. and it's less than 700 grand in, in a nice neighborhood. That's a, that's a good value. It's a good deal for the buyer, it would seem to me. Yeah, I agree, uh, and I think... This sale price has to do with its positioning out of the gates. Yeah, I mean, with it, it went out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think maybe the the seller and the and the listing agent might have kind of thought it was a tweener that you know it, it may not have been a land sale, or maybe thought that the house had, had a little bit more value to an end user than it did. Um, so this one went through a number of price reductions, uh, including a hundred thousand dollar price drop, which is which is not insignificant. That, yeah, we like. At those. one time went from eight forty nine to seven forty nine ultimately lands in the sixes, which is a pretty good number for a builder yeah. to get that house. I mean, you do have an acre, you can put, put up just about anything. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what goes on there. And Stonehurst is a uh, dead end road off of Richardson. Sure is, buddy in the town for us. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. And the trail is right behind yep. there as well. Uh, next up, 44 Nevada Road. Do you say Nevada or Nevada? I say Nevada. Yeah, I do too. But Las I feel Vegas, like I could Nevada. go either way on Las that one. Las Vegas, Nevada. I yeah. don't know. I, right, right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. It's hmm. like I say pecan, but I say pecan pie. So I think, you know, it depends on the... Yeah. So it, for, I guess when we're talking about real estate, it's Nevada. Okay. Sells it, for 731 and, and I'm not sure if this isn't a redevelopment plan. It, it is. Yeah. I'm almost positive that this is also a land sale. Based on the buyer's agency? Correct. No, based on the buyer. Right. Right. Well, okay. No, not the agent, the buyer. Okay. I think it could be based on both, but okay. we can have that conversation <laughs> offline. All right. All right. Um, anywho, 10,000 square feet. I think we should have it now. Okay. No, I don't want to have it now. All right. I was ready. 10,000 square foot lot, Mitchell School District. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what a 10,000 square foot lot, that's a, the lowest amount pretty much you're going to find for a right. 10,000 square foot lot in this neighborhood, right? At, th at this yeah. point, 731? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Uh, next up is 61 Greendale Avenue. Lots of Greendale action early yeah. on, huh? Yep. This is a nice little spot, though, on Greendale. Yeah, corner of Park Ave in Greendale. Yes, charming house, built in uh, 1912, right? Yeah, I mean, 2,000 square feet. Uh, it's a big lot, too, Rob, 12,000 square foot lot. We have a lot of big lots coming up. Yeah, it's, it's a big lot month. Yeah. Hmm. So this one, you know, it's a little dated, needs some, some updating, but I think it'll be a terrific home for the holidays. Yeah. Certainly for the next holidays, right. you need some updating. Yeah. Staying uh, on Greendale, right up the road is 136 Greendale Avenue. And uh, sticking with the theme of the bigger lots, 13,000 square foot road, or square foot road, <laughs> square foot lot. It's a tiny road. Yeah, I was going to say, narrow. <laughs> uh, I mean, this one's on Greendale, like across from Semino, to give some perspective. Yep. Um, so it doesn't quite get to the bend where it starts to abut 128. But this one's renovated, 2,000 plus square foot split level. Three beds, three baths, move right in. Yeah, interesting comp to the one that we just discussed before it, right? Back to back Greendales. Yeah, back, but but this one's way renovated -er than uh, 61 Greendale. Correct, different so style though. Yeah, it's the difference between a split and a colonial. Yeah, different buyer. Yeah. Uh, over in the Newman School District is 58 Avalon Road, uh, a house that I like how it was presented in such a way that it was very upfront that this house needed some updating. Uh -huh. um, looking for a and I quote, looking for a large colonial to update and customize. So um, they didn't. There you go. Yeah, they, they figured they were going to keep people from walking through the door. And they only wanted people who wanted to maybe do a project. And, yeah. You know, good number. That's right. a good house, I mean, great location. Agreed. Plenty of upside, too, there. I mean, you're just you're doing cosmetics. I'm sure the systems probably need to be updated, too. But a lot of room to grow there. Uh, and that's and 14, a four, Yeah, go ahead. Four, no, no, you say it. 14,810 square foot road. Yeah. No, <laughs> a lot. Good one. So, yeah. Yeah. So, a lot of space. All right. Uh, a lot of space at the next listing, too. 140 Bradford Street. This lot was uh, 13,900 square feet. And I think this is a development. Do you? I do. So, you think, you think this is coming down? Uh, I think it's possible based on the buyer's agency. Okay. But I could be wrong. But that price, I mean, we're seeing that price right, now. Right, we are. We definitely Comparable but, but, locations. But this is on the corner of Dedham Ave, so it's not like nestled in the middle of the Ladder Street part of Bradford. Right, um, right. But y you could be right. And I mean, this one, it was kind of like Lego built, you know, like yeah, the additions right. were For sure. sort of pieced together. So it's, it's, 
it stands to reason that it'll be redeveloped in some capacity, whether it comes down or not. You know, we we shall see, but that's well, a pretty visible one, so we will see. Well, if you if you were building a house either on this lot or the one on school, mm -hmm. right? Which where would you rather? Huh? Where would you rather build? Uh, take your time. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. Right. So it's a toss up. It and is. that one sold in the eights. Yep. Right. Okay. Fair right. enough. Yep. Okay. Sixty nine Wilshire <laughs> Park is next. We're uh, on to the longest of the ladder streets. This was an entry only. Did, yes, you was? did you see the buyer's agency compensation on this one? No. I almost missed it. What was it? It was $4,500. Oh, thank you. Yeah, That's so I nice know. of you. Jeez. Yeah. I mean. I wonder if the 94 days has anything to do with that. Right, exactly. <laughs> and the $45,000 discount yeah. on the original list price. $4,500. I mean, come on. At least make it a percentage. Right. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's all we're going to say about that one. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're done, Wilshire Park. At least with that one. 295 Manning Street. You might know a little bit about this one, Ryan. That's it is a land a, sale, Rob. It is a land sale. This one we, we can confirm. And this is also another big lot, 14,800 square it feet. It is. And there's going to be a beautifully, tastefully decorated custom home built on this lot starting mm -hmm. next month or so. All righty. Very good. Buyers are very happy. All right. Excellent. 88 Fairfield Street is next up. This is a nice neighborhood right at the early stages of Great Plain as you as you go <laughs> over Greendale. And I don't know. I mean, I thought this house showed well. We both walked <laughs> through this one, but I think 891 is a pretty good number. Yeah, I do. It was really nice, right? It was staged nice, nicely. Oh, I know where you're, <laughs> I know where you're going with this. I, I went into the garage. <laughs> like, I was like, this place looks really nice. And like, where's all their stuff? And then I opened the garage. Yeah. And I mean, it was floor to ceiling, just stuff just mashed in there. Right. It's like you could almost hear like, <laughs> help me. Right? It was like the closet on Sesame Street, like Ernie's closet <laughs> was always packed full of stuff. Whenever Bert opened it, all the stuff would come out. Yeah, right. I mean, it, I, it couldn't nice believe reference. how much much stuff was in that yeah garage. i mean like oh, okay yeah there, there it is yeah <clears throat> but yeah i mean good luck. why get a pod <laughs> right. we have a garage All right nice location um showed well absent the garage they should have just locked that door like i see the garage i actually know garage you can't see the garage right right i guess but, but then was, you think you're hiding was, something that was kind of funny yeah um anywho yeah so 613 mm -hmm. great plain avenue is the next listing this is one we are also familiar with yeah. our office represented the seller in this transaction uh, a lot of space, Ryan. A lot of history in this A lot of history, a, a good location, a little bit of a busier street, and uh, which I Huge think lot. kept it from going um, closer to that original list. But uh, yeah, you know, this is a, yet another example, and we have many of when you do an aggressive price reduction, it usually leads to a sale, sale, and that was, yeah. that was the case here. Yeah, the buyer of this house, I hope they appreciate what they're getting as far as the history and the the importance of this house to the town. Right. It originally built in the 1700s. Yeah, and it basically was, it's the house that and all the land around it was part of that family and it's the only remaining structure other than like a shed and a, and a pump, a well pump yep. on another property now. Yeah, and what, what also was interesting about that house was <laughs> when the buyer bought it in the 80s, the seller said, you can have it at this price, but I don't want to clear out the attic. And the buyer said, okay. And then he really didn't even get to the end of going through the attic until he had to sell it and was finding all these historical Treasures. artifacts, many of which are now at the Needham Historical Society yeah. if you want to go and see them. Um, anyway, hey. on to the next listing, 8 Fairfax Road, and that brings us to my deal of the month, right? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yeah. Deal of the month for me, 8 Fairfax Road. Well, let me first say I, I really like the location, which I think had just about probably everything to do with this sales price of $925,000. What surprised me so much about still why I went for that price was you're talking about a, a 1,400 square foot ranch that uh, wasn't necessarily updated. It was certainly a move in condition, but it wasn't new by any stretch. Um, it's just a, a, a high price for 1,400 square feet. And while the lot was 10,000 square feet, and you think maybe it's something you could redevelop, the shape of it was very prohibitive. And so is it possible somebody's going to buy that and maybe put on a second floor? Yeah. Or just even move into it. I just feel like 925 is a really, really good number for 8 Fairfax Road. That's why it's my deal of the month, right? Yeah, I would agree. It's a lot of money for, like you said. Not you know, a lot of square not, feet. Not a lot of square feet and single level living. Right. Sells for 925, mm -hmm. as does our next listing. So by comparison, 51 Mary Chilton Road, which may or may not be in Olin Woods, it's mm -hmm. 3,000 square feet, so twice the size. And, you know, different in many other ways, but yeah. it sells for 925. And uh, did you notice this home requires flood insurance? I did see that. I yeah. did see that. You don't see that very often. No. Especially when you're not, on, not near a coast. Yeah, right. agreed. But, you know, there's, there's, there are wetlands, obviously, in that part of town. Um, 
But yeah, flood insurance, huh? Yeah. How about that? Mm. $326 yeah, f- per year. For the year. Yeah. yeah. So it's not terrible. No. Okay. Uh, next listing is 14 Pythias Circle. Ryan, what do, you, what do you tell people where Pythias is? I, you know, Rob, I mean, we, remember yeah. we had a, a, a heck of a time finding it. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. And you were the navigator. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, this is one that, that I saw it on the, come up on the broker tour. I had never heard of Pythias Circle. And so it is, it's off of Damon, sort of by the cemetery off Parish. And this one's a little, it's a little cul-de-sac, as the name implies. And I, I, this was a candidate for me as my deal of the month for the seller. Mm-hmm. Then they thought more about it. I mean, it's 2,500 square feet. It's it needs, six it's, bedrooms. It's, it is, but it's like, a, it's like an army barracks up No, there. I know. But you know, it's but six bedrooms. It, it, yeah, but I mean, you're you're spending. It needs it needs everything. Like it's it's very it's it was very clean. It was empty. It presented fine. But you're doing a lot of work to this house. So at nine fifty three, you're paying essentially for the land plus the structure, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. everything walls in, and even on the exterior, you know, you're 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 gonna probably redo a good deal of that. So you're you're dumping. A lot more than your purchase price into this property. Yeah, right. But at the end of the day, is it not worth? Is twenty five hundred square feet on, on that lot on a cul de sac not worth nine fifty? It's I worth mean, it if somebody's yeah. willing to pay for and it. And it went in, in, you know, a couple of weeks. So I mean, I think it's, I think the market basically told me to, you know, go climb a tree. Yeah. All right. So, uh, then I guess you have to do that then. Yeah. Next up, we're gonna go uh, over the million dollar threshold to Six Oakhurst Circle. Sells for just over a million, a million eleven, and. Uh, Nice house. Yeah. Didn't, didn't need anything. Uh, move right in. And it's a uh, cool house. Very unique. Yeah. Very unique. The layout and, and it's it's nicely done. The, the fourth bedroom is on the first floor, so you either have a fourth bedroom or you have a living room. Yep. You know, so it's it's it, you could you could say this is a three. It's effectively a three bedroom. Yep. But all in all, you're not going to find too many houses like it in Needham. All right. Stepping on over to the stepladder streets, right? Mm-hmm. As we affectionately call them, 53 Carey Road. Now this house was. Turnkey. Yep. It had sold for seven hundred and forty-five thousand back in two thousand fifteen. Uh, the people who bought it back then did a lot of work mm-hmm. over the last three years, seemingly, and it uh, paid off in the sense that they did get sixty thousand more in three than days. it was listed for. Yeah, very short order. Good for them. Uh, next up, seven eighty Webster Street, a walk to town location. This was a uh, good square footage, twenty nine hundred square feet. Doesn't good feel location. Like it, though. Yeah, small rooms. The way it was decorated, I think. It was yeah, I wanted to like this specific. more. Yeah, right. I tried very hard. It just, it, to me, it felt very cramped. Well, th- if that's the case, then <clears throat> I'm guessing you feel like a million ninety nine is a pretty good number. But I mean, it's not worth less. Right. You know, I think that. All right. I, I think you could you could get a lot out of that house. Yeah. Which the new owner, I'm sure, will. All righty. Over to 32 Parkvale Road. This is uh, close to the golf course, kind of off of uh, Green Street. Big lot, sixteen thousand square feet, and it was built in 1991. Yeah. A lot of space. You always know there's it's an it's an out of town buyer when the directions are West Street to South Street, because we know West Street in this sense as Dedham Ave. Yep. But when you're in Dedham, it's called West Street. Right. So. Yeah. Good observation, yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Crush that. Really. That looks like it might be a modular, maybe. Right. It's possible. Yeah. 1991. Um, okay. 43 Crestview. If you hop on south and go pretty far east, you'll find Crestview Road. You and I walked through this one, Ryan. Yeah. We both really liked it. Yeah, I zipped price. some buyers over. I thought, I mean, this was a, it was listed. We knew it was going to go over its listing price. We did. It was, I mean, is turnkey, very nicely, tastefully renovated, acre lot, you know, quiet street off of South Street. You know, it just, it really was positioned very, very well. It showed very well and it returned very well. Yeah, for sure. Nice house. Yeah. Back closer to town, 39 Stevens Road, as we return to the, well, I know you don't like to, Call it the ladder district, right? <laughs> but it certainly is the ladder. But, but the, the ladder street district. I mean, yeah, all right. it's a ladder street. You just don't like the word district yeah, in there anyway. Because district allows other houses and other streets to glom on. Like, you don't call it the Owen Woods district. It's just Owen Woods, and that's what's in it. Right. Okay. But, okay. So, either way. Great location. Small lot. A little bit, just under 8,000 square feet. But, again, turnkey. I think it, right in. yeah, and I think in, in in this neighborhood you are willing to overlook yes. that. And I feel like this kind of house and this kind of price is a little bit of a sweet spot because it's hard to, you know, if, if the most you can spend is one point three, as crazy as it sounds, there you know there aren't many options in this neighborhood no. because you either have to you know buy new or a house that's in rough shape. So I, I think it did very well at that number, especially because it went under agreement, then back on the market, right. and then back under agreement. Right. Um, over uh, in the outskirts. Deep in the outskirts there, 100 Windsor Road. I really like this house. Okay. Uh, it had a, a lot of space, um, you know, smaller rooms, kind of shorter he- ceiling height, but it was turnkey. You had the three-car garage. You had a really big lot, 
in, in a really nice neighborhood. Over an acre. Over an acre, yeah. And, and you know, big backyard and woods behind there. I was I was surprised this thing landed at 1405. It was a contender for my deal of the month for the buyer. Right? Okay. All right. And then a very different house at the same exact sales price is up next, Six Shady Lane. Mm -hmm. I would ask you if you had your choice between 100 Windsor and Six Shady Lane, which one would you take? But I know your answer, it's Six Shady Lane, right? Okay, why? Because you like the location yeah, of it better. I'm not, I'm not an outskirts guy. Yeah, I, know. I like to visit the outskirts. Right. And this, I'm and this is- I'm a town guy. Yeah, right, I know. And that's why I said I, I wouldn't ask you. Yeah. But the square footage is still, this isn't a small house either. No, it's not. And it's a good size lot, it's 10,890. It's, I mean, Shady Lane, for those right. in the unawares, is between Appleton and Dawson. So and for people who don't know where that, that is, it's in, it's in Bird's Hill. <laughs> yeah. Or on Bird's Hill. So it's, it's you never, I mean, there's no traffic on Shady Lane. No. No. And no so, sun, apparently. Right. But yeah, th this is a nice little deal. I think the buyer probably did pretty well here. Okay. Uh, 569 Charles Street. We're like ping-ponging back and forth yeah. between outskirts and in-town location. This was a... Uh, $200,000 discount there yeah. on the uh, original list. Could use some updating. Uh, yeah. Built in 88. And plenty of square footage though. Yeah. It's That's big. Got some 88 look and feel to it. It's 88-ish. Yeah. Uh, right. But this one last sold in 1994, Rob, for how much? Oh, this is fun. Uh, 1994, it sold for one four eight fifty. Oh gosh. So you basically doubled your money. Eight, but was it 7,000 square feet then? Or did they add on? Oh, I don't know. Like, is that garage now? I don't know. You, you, you've now exceeded the extent of my research. I well, don't... I mean, if I'm going to miss by that much, I need, <laughs> I need to cry foul somewhere. Yeah. All right. Let's get into some new construction. 1600 Central Avenue is our next listing. This one is near Pine, Charles River Street, if mm -hmm. you will. And uh, it wasn't on the market for very long, considering it was right. it was put on early in the construction process. This yeah. is one of those ones you expect to see on there for 100 days or, yeah. at least, and it wasn't. I mean, this one, the land value here was six and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what, what your property on Central Ave is worth, if it's land, it's around that. Yeah. I didn't get inside this one, though, Rob. No, no. Neither did I. All right. Okay. Did you get inside the next one, 96 Greendale Avenue? We're back on Greendale. We are back on Greendale. So this is right near where Greendale meets High Street, mm -hmm. and it's a mostly new home. Right. right, so a little bit of the existing foundation, some of the framing. And this land was acquired for seven and a quarter. Hmm. So $100,000 more on Greendale versus the Avenue. Interesting. Yeah. That's some good research there. There you go. We've seen a couple houses like that, right? Yeah. Right, similar. I like that look. Yeah. That's the on uh, what road am I thinking? Warren. Warren, correct. Okay, I love when you know what I'm thinking. 27 Deerfield Road is the next listing. Another new construction, and th boy, this one wasn't on the market. No, it wasn't. Long. You have just about it's just as much written as I do on this house. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple words more. I scratched mine out. Yeah, so. why though? How come you don't I, have much to say? I, I, because it doesn't show in public record as to when. It's definitely a new address because mm -hmm. there's no 27 Deerfield. Yep. There was a 30 Deer Deerfield that sold recently to a builder, but how can a 30 become a 27? They're on different sides of the street. I don't know, you never so know. So I was very confused, and then I just decided maybe you knew. Yeah, I don't, but okay. I do know something about the next listing. That oh you good, know. let's okay. just do that one. Then. All right, time to <clears throat> reverse roles here. All right. So our next listing is 73 Manning Street, which, I mean, I could talk about that picture all day long. Yeah. I think yeah, the picture is fascinating, so <laughs> we could just stay on that while people enjoy that. But my, my question is, so this is the highest selling house, I believe, ever in Needham for a lot that's under 8,000 square feet. Is it? It's a 7,400 yeah, 7, square foot lot. Yeah. So prior to this one, what was the most expensive house to sell in Needham on a lot of under 8,000 square feet? How much did it sell for? Oh, jeebers. How about the 1.5s? One 1.685, one okay. 11 James, which didn't sell too oh, long yeah. ago. But still, that's $140,000 less yeah. than this one. I mean, 1.825 on a lot that's 7,400 square feet is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Which is why I thought it might be your deal of the month oh. for the seller. I thought it might be because no. of that. There were too many to choose from. There were a lot. There were a lot of one, uh, deals of the months, but this one was. Yeah. I think I was just so mesmerized by the picture. The picture's I fantastic. I really couldn't get past that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good looking picture. Yeah. Anything else are we done? That lot sold for 650. Right, that's a that's a solid little spread. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, good job. Uh, all right, um, on to a. Less impressive picture, no offense, no offense. It's one, more, of a, more of a rendering. Yeah, rendering. 150 Tudor Road is the next one. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so uh, we, we can speak about this one a little bit, right, Ryan? Yes, we we constructed this one for a nice family who moved to Needham early on in the construction and kind of took over the reins. You know, it's a really cool house on Tudor, good location, nice size lot, and finished very well. All right, very good. 
I have some breaking news, Ryan. Okay. Would you believe I just got an email from the from the owner of my previous home saying that I have two boxes there waiting on the front porch. <laughs> it's been three years since <laughs> I've moved there. I, I and this has been going on for three years. I don't know what to say. Like, it's not my fault. All right, I'll stop sending your stuff there. Three years and there's still <laughs> some, two boxes arriving at my house. If it's if it's you know fans of the show, I appreciate it. But just send it to the <laughs> studio your, if you cur- will. Your current address? Yeah, I don't think she's very happy with me. Okay. okay. Sorry, on. I digress. Fifty one Pershing Road is the next listing, and uh, wow. I think, yeah, right. Yeah, wow. totally. Yeah, exactly. th- this one's going to be my deal of the month. Just because it's it's for that that location that is a huge number. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's, that location is uh, off of Parish. Yes. Correct? I mean the, the location, location, location. I mean. All right. Well. Uh, but it, it's it's a it's the buyer a big, agreed. It's a big number, but that sixty two hundred square feet is all above grade. So that's a big house. Mm-hmm. So then you start to think, all right, yes, it's 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 almost two million dollars, but we're seeing two million dollars popping up all over town. Why not? At 51 Pershing, I mean Pershing, well maybe not a, a well-known street. It's not like it's not a busy road. I mean, no. Pershing is a dead end. You're never on it unless you live on it. Um, it's very quiet. There's new construction next door, so it conforms. But it, that's a big house. It's a big lot and a big number. But I mean, it all it all bodes well for the town. I mean, it's, you can get two million dollars there, and then okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, good job, Person. So we have we have one listing left and we haven't gotten to your deal of the month. I know. I wonder which one's gonna be. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> okay. I knew it. I yeah. knew it. Eight Fair Oaks Park, Ryan. Yeah, Take it away. The I, big seller is your deal of the month I for the know, buyer. I know. Can that, you believe that? I don't that? know if that's ever happened. Well, I just I look at what you're spending on Fair Oaks, right? There's two across the street from this house being built that are gonna be in the mid two. Right, which is which is that was the question I had lined up for you before yeah. I knew if this is your deal of the month. Are if are the builders across the street happy with this price? Does that fit I, in I, your the, commentary? I mean, if, if, if I'm the builder across the street, I, I'm looking at that and I'm saying, all right, this house is built in 2005. So it's completely different. Okay. Ours are going to be, you know, but 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 that's that's a discussion for a later show. Okay. This one, I just feel like you're, you're getting someone's house that they custom built in 2005 and it's very specific, right? So the taste, and that's what kept this house on the market. Not because I thought it was overpriced, because it's just, you walk in there and you're just like, okay, I can't picture myself living here because of the way this homeowner has it decorated and that's fine so i think you're going to spend some money in there but even if you do you have a two and a half million dollar comp potentially across the street you're not going to you're not going to touch that as far as what you have to spend so you could go in there and spend even like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and have that house look amazing and still be comfortably under what you know, the market can hold on Fair Oaks Park. Yeah, and I mean, all things considered, it looks pretty amazing as it is anyway. Yes, right? I'm, not, it, it, you're not, I'm not talking about going in there and doing a total gut face-off. This is about just cosmetics. Right. And it, that, that street can support it. So you're getting a bit of a discount going in with tremendous upside and a street that you know can absorb it. Yeah. So that's why I thought that was a good deal for the buyer. I thought whoever bought that house, because after it sat for 100 days, someone's getting a deal. Yeah. So there you go. Not only did they get a deal, they got your deal of the month. Yeah, that, that counts for something. Yeah, I'm not sure what. <laughs> Market snapshot time. Take a look as we head into the doldrums of winter, the deep cold. A lot of listings compared to last year. Yeah, we still have some absorption in our, in our future. We hope. But that average listing price is creeping down, which I think is interesting because the average sale price is skyrocketing up. Yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. But you know, look at what's under agreement, 39 versus 42 last year. It's all very, very consistent. It's right, I love, well, especially because I love about Needham. We've churned through so many houses in the past yeah. two months. Okay, Ryan, if anybody wants to reach out to us and <clears throat> ask any questions. Or send us any uh, parcels. That's right, or if they want to get a free cup. <laughs> I tried to dangle that in front of everybody last show. It didn't work. No. We didn't get any calls on that, did we? No, no, all we right. still have all of our cups. Okay. Um, Anywho, so feel free to call us, 781-707-6564. Email us at rob.ryan at hawthorne.re.com. And you can always follow us on Twitter. The handle is at hawthorne underscore WMHW. All right. That does it. How did you feel about the show? Uh, good. Yeah? Good. Better yeah. or worse than you thought it would be? Um, well, I mean, considering we had to do like six or seven takes, it wasn't bad. Right. That's a good point. Just kidding. No. We only did one take. Always. That's it for this one take edition of What's My House Worth. Thanks uh, again for joining us. Enjoy your holiday season. Definitely. And then we'll see you again right afterwards.